Tell us your name and where you were born. My name is Patricia Gervin Brown, and I was born in Buffalo, New York, but I grew up in Potsdam, New York. And uh, what is your role in the community today? I am the president and CEO of the Pflugerville Chamber of Commerce. What were you doing in 1965? <laughs> I think 1965 I was in the middle of a major snowstorm up in Potsdam. So, um, and I was in elementary school, as a matter of fact. So, and in Potsdam, the uh, economic base for my hometown was dairy farming and education. So talk about a diverse economic base. It was um, pretty challenging up there, and still is. How did you, uh, how did Pflugerville get on your radar? My husband was living here. My future husband at the time was living here. And so when we got married, um, this is where he was living. He was living in Gatlinburg, which is one of the, the first uh, subdivisions, among the first subdivisions that was in Pflugerville. So we got married and moved to Pflugerville out of Austin. What was your first impressions of this little community? <laughs> um, it felt a lot like my hometown. It felt a lot like Potsdam. And everybody was so friendly. And what I noticed is that when we would go to HEB, how friendly the kids were, the young people were. They um, seemed to um, really want to help you out. And it just it felt like home when, when we first got here. And the population at that time, I think the, it said 7777. Seven, seven, seven. And um, after we moved here, we contributed to two more citizens being here in Pflugerville. So my, my children have grown up in the market here. How did you come into the role of the Chamber of Commerce? Um, Elaine Boozer was president, excuse me, she was chair of the board at that time, and the chamber was kind of being run more as a social club, and they really wanted to take it a different direction. They wanted to take it more as being a business, um, more corporate uh, environment. And I had come out of um, EDS, Corporate America, and they approached me and said, would you be willing to come in and take over and help us make that transition? And the rest is history. I will have been there for 20 years in April, and the chamber celebrating its 30 year anniversary. So I have been there with two thirds of the uh, the chamber's existence. What was your preparation, your background, your training for that role? My degree is in English communications with a business minor. So I feel really fortunate that I get to use what my degree program is. Not everybody does do that. I started off as a music major because my family was all music, music educators. Thought I want to do that. They sent me in the classroom my first my freshman year. My freshman year went, no, this is not <laughs> this is not part of my makeup. So I um, started off in retail, worked in Syracuse for a year, which what which is what brought me to Texas because after you spend a year in Syracuse where they measure the snow in feet and not inches. Um, and I thought there's got to be a better place to live, so that's what brought me to Texas. I worked for H. Ross Perot's company, um, EDS, for a number of years. I was a, a manager with them, and then I worked for Texas Association of School Boards and Texas um, Dental Association. So I've had a really varied background between corporate America, and I worked for a small business, a floral business, which is where I met my husband. Where was your office when you came to work? Our office actually started at least when I started with the chamber in 1995, is where the city manager's office is now. And Jean Hassel's office was right next door in the, off of Main Street. And then when did you move to the present location? The chamber had bought the building a year before, which was the original city hall, city council chamber's original police department had bought the, the building the year before. Uh, we moved in the year afterwards because it was basically an old cinder block building. We furrowed out the walls. We There was exposed electrical conduit. We took care of that. We uh, had to knock down some walls to be within ADA compliance. And so we did all that interior renovation. And then a few years ago, we um, a few years later, we went ahead and did the exterior renovation. We're, at the time, we were one of the few chambers that actually owns their own building here in Central Texas. So. Uh when you came in at that time, about how many investors and our members did you have, and uh, who, who were some of the businesses, the key businesses in Flitterville at that time? The charter membership was about 35 original. We were incorporated in, in October of 1985 as the Greater Flitterville Chamber of Commerce to serve the same footprint as the school district boundaries. When I started with the chamber, the prominent businesses were um, Encore, which was TXU at that time. Um, Priest Meyer, I'm trying to remember some of the people around the board, of course, John Fulger Realty, the city, the school district, um, though, and, and all the banks. All the banks were part of the chambers. We had in several home builders because at that point in time, Fulger was going through a bust of um, home building. Not so many businesses, so the economic base was, was based upon rooftops at that, at that moment in time. 
how did uh, that change uh, over the years from rooftops to present? I, at the time when I started with the chamber, we were the only organization that was using terms like economic development and business development and needed to diversify. Um, as the community grew and prospered, uh, the city fathers at the time recognized that they really needed to diversify the economic base, they really needed to get some more businesses in here. We couldn't be the same little bedroom community that, that Pflugerville was, was based upon that was 20 miles off of, or excuse me, four miles off of I-35. Um, so when City Hall kind of changed their attitude towards that and was more um, welcoming to businesses than the chamber took on a different role and we were the city's economic development agent for several years uh, before uh, the, the PCDC was created. We helped the city vote out of Cap Metro which we had to do at that time in order to have that, that um, percentage of the sales tax available to us and then we helped vote in the economic development sales tax. We lost it the first time around and actually two votes in order to, to get it in. When we did that, then we did not become, we, we were no longer the economic development agent or PCDC took over. At that point too, then there was three of us that were talking about economic development. It was the, the Chamber, the Economic Development Corporation, and the, and the City Hall, the, the City of Pflugerville. And then that changed, it changed dramatically. We, uh, and we started the Open for Business campaign when 45 and 130 was under construction. We knew that was going to change things dramatically because Pflugerville does not have any of that frontage along I-35, that economic base, all that sales tax goes to the city of Austin. We knew that 45 and 130 was going to be our economic engine for, for Pflugerville. And then all of a sudden everybody started talking about economic development and the need for businesses and, and really that's when we became open for business, which opened up into the Come Home to Shop campaign. Uh, well, you're going to talk about transportation for a moment because that uh, was uh, a player with economic development. Uh, so. Can you tell us before and after SH-130 and 45? <laughs> um, before, everybody thought when they were on 35 and it said Pflugerville that they were in Pflugerville. They didn't realize they were not in, in Austin. So 685 was the back door to Pflugerville. Um, and sometimes people never came through the downtown Pflugerville. They never got off of 1825. They did not realize when they got off on 1825, it wasn't until it became Pecan Street further in town that that was Pflugerville. So there was a big difference between um, perceived what Pflugerville was and where, where Pflugerville was and where it wasn't. Um, and then when once 35, or excuse me, 45 and 130 opened up, it just, you know, opened up everything for us. And all those dollars started coming into the this, this city for sales tax and um, property taxes. Uh, tell me a little bit on um, how marketing the community has changed in the decades that you've been there. I think it's <laughs> the, the biggest change I've seen is that when you used to watch the weather maps and the traffic maps way back when when I started you never saw Pflugerville on there because it's a really long name so you wouldn't see it on the crawl, you wouldn't see it on the maps, you wouldn't see it on the weather maps, you wouldn't see it on the traffic maps, now you see it all the time too and Pflugerville really has found its place in the map. We kind of had to wait our turn because Austin was so popular it, it still is the big draw for, for the market for Central Texas. Round Rock had Dell and um, so they were the other big draw so Pflugerville was kind of the in-between area in fact the chamber says we serve the in-betweens Northern Travis, Southern Williamson County um, when we started landing some of the some of the businesses and with the uh, with the toll roads, then all of a sudden Pflugerville literally be started being on the map. Um, you've been key in some very interesting slogans <laughs> that catch on, uh, and uh, you might talk about those uh, between a rock and a weird place, or come home to shop, and I think we're leading into something with fun. Yes, yes, so the beauty of the rock and weird place is all the city, you know, they, they were the ones that came up with that, but great slogan. We started with the Open for Business campaign in, I think it was 2005, like I said, and then we morphed into the Come Home to Shop program because Pflugerville is a suburban urban environment, and when we were seeing all the commuting going outside of Pflugerville, we were seeing dollars that were leaving, or as they say in the industry, leakage. The sales tax dollars were going elsewhere. They were going to Round Rock. They were going to Austin. They were going where people were commuting to, where they were where they were working, not necessarily where they were living. So we we um, created the Come Home to Shop program to get people to understand, create that awareness that you need to be shopping in your own backyard. You need to help keeping the local um, economy strong, and that is a trademark program now for us. The slogan is Come Home to Shop. Uh, to uh really market, uh, I know there was a period of time a couple of years ago that they brought in like a uh, 
a bus and did a tour, and I'm not sure because of the over overlapping of uh, the chamber with PCDC. I don't know who did that, but uh, yeah, I, I know that you have certainly been more aggressive. When you start, when you had dollars to spend towards it, it was easier. I mean, it's much easier to do that. When we were the city's economic development agent, we were limited in terms of what um, was available. Um, I believe it was at the time with the, the development corporation, 10% of their revenue can be devoted towards uh, marketing dollars. And we had to create an awareness, so we did the bus tours. We brought in realtors and developers from across the region, and we just drove them around Pflugerville. I'd already been doing that for years when we were the economic development agent, and it was very significant because people didn't realize how many rooftops are out here in Pflugerville. But there was a time when you would break that, that wall or break that hill on 685, and all of a sudden you saw all those rooftops. You saw, you saw Falcon Point, you saw all those rooftops, and that really got the attention of the businesses and developers, potential businesses and developers to come into market that this really was a good place to do that. And the bus tour has helped a lot, tremendously. Now, um, I think the city has also gone to state and perhaps even national conventions and our uh, activities, events to talk about the city. Share some of, of that. Well, um, a few years ago, we went to uh, um, uh, the shopping center conferences out in Nevada, I believe it is. A dele delegation of us went out there, too. And all we were saying was Pflugerville, Pflugerville, Pflugerville. And that brought a lot of the Stonehill tenants. Newquest was out there, too. And that really raised the, the awareness on that. We're part of a group, uh, the regional partners with the Austin Chamber, because let's face it, they're the, they're the, the big draw here in the market. Um, we work with them. Um, all the time for prospects that were coming in there. And when this was also a mindset that changed a few years ago, when the Austin community, Austin Chamber, recognized that they had some inherent challenges with the Austin business community, the development community, they decided to be a little bit more cooperative with the outline areas. And that changed, literally changed the landscape for Pflugerville. And so we have a great working relationship with them. Um, we get lots of leads from them. Um, and there's a really good spirit of cooperation, not only between us and Austin, but Round Rock, Cedar Park, Georgetown, um, all the regional players in, in the market right now. And that just helps us market Pflugerville. I was at a regional partners meeting um, a few, I think it was last year, at Leander. And it was funny, I was listening to some of the challenges that they were having, and it's exactly where we were 10 years ago. So we're doing well. It's just our turn. It's our time. Um. Your board, you have a board of directors I that do. helps manage the, uh, the group. Um, tell us about developing leaders uh, and any programs that you might have um, within the community. We, at, we, we did the first leadership Pflugerville program in 1995, and it um, was not really well received. I don't think there was enough um, interest from the community for being part of all that. So we're really glad that PCDC has kind of picked up that torch these many years later and uh, run with it. A lot of our leadership development comes from the f from businesses that are here in our market and we want to make sure that our board um, reflects the diversity that we have in our market these days, which I think it does. Um, so they sometimes come in through the ambassador program we have in or somebody that just really is present and accounted for. They're coming to all of our networking events and it really has changed these days. Um, we have our, our coffee series, which is called Morning Edition. We might have started off with about 10 people. Now we fill the room. I think you've come to a couple of them. You know, we have anywhere from 20 to 30 to 35 people that really fill the room. And we try to keep that sense of community and um, that sense of everybody's accessible and wants to be your friend when people come in. And I think that really helps set the tone for the kind of leadership we want on the board of directors. And keeps them very much informed on the uh, pulse speed. Uh, yeah. Today, what's going on? Yeah. So they, they are ready to react and contribute. One of the things we do is um, we, we say to the board, you, know, you can't commit to come every month. You're going to really miss out on things. And it's, it's interesting in the dynamic environment we're in right now. Um, I'm always amazed from one 30-day period to the next how much I have to report on in terms of activity and sales tax collection. We just did the sales tax report for this last period. And this is November's collections. We were up 16%, and Round Rock was actually down almost 14%, and, and Austin was only up 0.5%. So that really kind of speaks to the, to the leakage that we were experiencing. People are coming home to shop, and they've got choices now to shop in, in, in Pflugerville. Uh, 
Pflugerville has been uh, ranked in the last couple of years as a destination place. Uh, tell us how that happens and uh, why you think that's happened. Well, you know, they call us and say, oh, can you send us some pictures? We never know where the ranking's going to be when, when it comes out. So the first time Money Magazine did the ranking, we were, we were 43. The year later, we were 44, so we went down a point, and then we went up to 20 this past year. And it, it's the ranking of the best small cities to um, raise your family in. And that ranking number 20 is pretty significant because the size of, of the range that we're in is from 50 to 300,000, 50,000 to 300,000. So that, that's pretty significant that we jumped up that much this last year. So I think a lot of it, I think, has to do with the quality of life, the, um, the geographic location that we're so close to Austin. Um, there's so much to do. Lake Pflugerville, I think, is a real uh, big driving feature for all that. And our wonderful hike and bike system. I think the, the city fathers that were responsible for all that really makes a big difference in, in having your, your children feel, feeling safe for your children when they're out on the hike and bike trail. That kind of um, recognition also has a snowballing effect because it, again, gets your investors uh, to look at the community. Plus, it uh, brings in families who say, this is the place I want to live. Right. And the Hawaiian Falls project really has jump-started the notion of tourism. We had kind of been playing with that throughout the years, but now that Hawaiian Falls is in our market and it creates Pflugerville more of a destination, not only with the, uh, the lake in here, and so that now hotels are coming into our market. And we were surprised when we started working with the city and started listing all the different true tourism type of destinations. Um, there really is a lot of places for people to come. They come, they spend, they go home, and then they don't eat up a lot of city services. So tourism is really a healthy economic um, development feature in our market right now. And, you know, and the movies that have been shot in Pflugerville, that's the other thing. We used to work a lot with the location scouts that come through that now goes to the Texas um, Com Film Commission and goes through the city. And, and Pflugerville has been designated as a film-friendly city. But we worked with the location scouts for the Newton Boys, um, Courage Under Fire. And these are the older movies that some of the new staffers don't remember. Um, let's see, What's Eating Gilbert Grape? when Leonardo DiCaprio was before he was Leonardo DiCaprio. So we worked with a lot of those location scouts when they're coming through here. And that's kind of an interesting thing. We, and we get those calls in the chamber office, you know, secondhand lines, we want to go out to the house where it was filmed. That's somebody's home. <laughs> you just don't walk up to somebody's home and knock on the door. But um, that, is, that is a form of tourism in our market. Um, the um, activities that you have uh, with the chamber, you've mentioned a few, but they have grown in number and in attendance. Uh, so you have maybe, what, four, four events, at least four events a month, and then you have uh, sp speakers of interest to the investors that uh, also uh, Sure. Happen. We have our coffee series, which is morning edition. Um, we have our luncheon series, which we initially called Chamber Chatter, which I still like that name, but it's now the Chamber Luncheon, so a little more staid name. And we try to make sure that there are topical speakers that come in. Um, we try to create a really welcoming environment. So the luncheon is really three meetings in one. You, you, you come in, you have your lunch, um, you have your speaker, and then hopefully there's, there's some great networking that takes place. And there is some great network, networking that takes a place. And we have a ribbon cutting every week. We've standardized those to be Thursdays at 11. And um, we, are, we are booked, we are growing. And then we have, uh, most chambers have some sort of lunch and learn program, but of course we have to call ours Food for Thought. And yes, everything is PF, Food for Thought. Um, and those are strictly a learning environment. They come into the location, they grab their box lunch, they sit down and learn. Uh, and we try to make sure that those are catered to our current business market and what, what, they, what their needs are. And this year we're going to be doing a series on public speaking because everybody has a social media presence, but sometimes they don't have a good presence when it comes to uh, public speaking. So that's what our program will be this year. Um, the Chamber partners with numerous groups, uh, specifically the city, the school district, uh, etc. Uh, so this partnership has really been a core uh, to the community and its growth. Uh, can you address either of those partnerships or other partnerships that you might have that you see as very Sure. Viable? We have a great partnership with the Rotary Club. When I started with the Chamber, the Rotary Club kind of was was not what it is, what it has evolved into now. So we work with them on the scholarship program. Um, we work with the, the district on multiple levels, the progress report, the career and technical education program, the job shadowing program. Um, I have been participated with many, 
many strategic planning sessions with both the school district and the city, um, the Pflugerville Education Foundation, um, and the Lions Club, you know, and the Chamber's really all about partnerships. I look at the Chamber as kind of being the mother of the community, and you know that when you're a parent or a mother of a community, you, you know, you really work very hard with your children to teach them those life skills that they're going to need, and the Chamber's kind of been that way. Um, that's kind of what our logo reflects these days, too, is that, okay, we, we're here, you are here now, it's time for us to move in this direction. Here, you go ahead and take this project and run with it. We're still here to support you. But it's time for somebody else to take this project on so we can be the strong voice of the business community we want to be. Technology has changed a lot of different groups. Uh, let's go back to when you began and the technology that you had at your uh, disposal and then where you've come now and how it has uh, been a player. We, when I first started with the chamber, the fax machine was our friend, you know, phone calling, and, you know, we, we, we did the typical hard copy newsletter we, we mailed to everybody. We were the first organization in Pflugerville to put up a website in 1995. Um, we're probably on our third, for, or excuse me, our fifth or fifth generation, fourth or fifth generation of the, of the website. Um, we put up our Facebook page before anybody else did, and then we just recently uh, started tweeting. So emailing is our friend. We try not to overwhelm our, our investors with too much information. So thus we have our weekly wire, which is an electronic newsletter that goes out to everybody on Monday. And we try to keep it just focused strictly on the business community. And last year is when we saw the need for the tourism component to start really kicking in. And that's when we crafted the working relationship with the city to, to start all that. And so then the, the Fun TX website that just was rolled out a couple weeks ago. Uh, the chamber is a 501c6. Yes, ma'am. Tell, tell me what that is. Um, it's not the traditional C3 organization. That's mostly what business organizations are. Rotaries are like C4s and whatnot. So we have the nonprofit designation, but we're still a business. We need to be the best run business in the community, as far as I'm concerned. So we're a nonprofit only on May 15th when we file our taxes. Otherwise, um, we're a business. You know, we, we, we have to pay for electricity bill and taxes and all that, too. Uh, and one of the things that you do is during uh, the election season, uh, you usually have a candidate forum so that the, uh, your investors can ask questions and get a feel for who the candidates right. are. Right. We do two. We do one in, in the spring for, when the, for the Board of Trustees for School District and one in the fall for the, um, the City Council in the mayoral elections. And now and then if there's something on the local level, the county level or on the state level and there's an opportunity to do something like that, we will. But um, two years ago, just happened to have Congressman McCall and Congressman Flores were available on the same day and so we had them come and speak to our to our group and that was a pretty significant day that was that was um, that was a lot of fun uh, not only do you have your monthly events but you also have annual events that are, are very special and one of those I'd like to talk about is the expo mm -hmm. and talk about birthing it and <laughs> to where it is today yeah we started it in 1995 96 I think is when we started it um, and it basically is a business expo. That's really what it was designed for. When you are um, running a volunteer organization, you have, I always tell our board, we have this, you have, this is your calendar year. You have this much time of a volunteer time. What are you going to do with that volunteer time? How are you going to do that so that the investors, which is what we call members these days, are getting, re getting return on their investment? So we came up with the notion of the Family Festival and Expo. We started it, um, I believe it was in 96, at what was then Chaparral Ice with one tent and might have had 300 people in attendance, and we thought that was, that was pretty good. Now, um, these many years later, we have five tents. We had it at Hawaiian Falls last year, and we had over 5,000 people in attendance. And what, it, it is a business expo. What we really like to do is bring the best parts of our community together church groups, school groups, civic groups together, and then give, that gives an opportunity for the businesses to showcase them. And I'm still hearing to this day, I didn't know there were that many businesses in Pflugerville. And you know, that's the, that's, that's, the, that's the good, bad thing about that, is that people come out and we have repeat people that come every year because they love seeing what the new businesses are in there too. It's, it's my, one of my favorite events of the year we do. And then later on that, in that month, we will do the Halloween, on, on a Halloween food drive. It used to be Halloween on Main Street. And that's the tr one of the true community events we do. We do that as a food drive for one of our local food pantries. And that's a really easy kind of come and go. The businesses come and set up tables, and it's an investor-only event. And those are a lot of fun to see the kids coming out. And now we've been doing it for so many years. We see multiple generations, you know, 
we see the original parents, now our grandparents and their grandchildren that come around to the tables, and that's a lot of fun. Well, that, that's, uh, that's really cool. Uh, volunteerism has been uh, a thread throughout the community from the earliest beginnings in the 18, uh, late 1800s uh, to make things happen. And I think uh, you can probably see uh, evidence of that still today. And so you're in uh, investors and ambassadors. What are some of their volunteer things back to the community? Um, being part of the chamber and the chamber with its partnerships, that's the way that they give back is, is of their time and efforts. So when it comes to the, the expo or the Halloween event or our, our annual banquet that we have coming out. And we try to recognize those volunteers too um, on an annual basis too. So the challenge I think this year is that we have five generations in the workforce and they look at volunteerism completely different than maybe what the um, greatest generation did or even what the baby boomers do, which I'm part of. And so you have to kind of make it worth their wild and make sure that they're getting something back in that. And that's, it's gonna be a challenge for any kind of volunteer organization. That's an interesting observation, and in your role, you're able to see that. So can you go into that a little more depth? What do you see as, as the present generation looking at as far as volunteerism? What, what do they want to see? You know, my children are um, the millennials, and they want immediate gratification. They've grown up with every, all the technology, everything right in, in their hands. And what I say is they may have a social pres they have a social presence, but they don't have a social consciousness. And so you kind of have to make sure that you're appealing to that generation. And then there's the ones, the, the Gen X, the Gen Ys, all, all those in there too, where they, they really need to get something back for it. They really need to understand that when they go out and they're volunteering their time, that it's not only showcasing themselves as individuals, but they're representing their businesses they're part of. And we always make sure that when we are acknowledging the volunteer, we're, we're acknowledging the business at the same time because that's why they're doing it. That's why the business, and that's why the industry standard in the, in the chamber business has been not to call them members, we call them investors because we realize that they're not only investing their time, but they're investing their money and we want to make sure that they're getting that back in return. So you, you really have got to, I think maybe the, the older generation, the baby boomers, if we got a t-shirt for doing something or a little plaque, that was fine. The younger generation, they want to get more. They need to have um, more attaboys, if you will, um, for their time. The Weekly Wire really is chamber-based about what's going on right. within the chamber. But it's, it goes to the members. It goes to the investors, right. Goes, and then it is, um, we want to make sure that they know what's happening in the market and that might be opportunities for them for volunteerism for them to get involved in. Because right now there's a couple of career symposiums that are going out there. Region 13's doing one. I think Hendrickson High School was sponsoring one. And so it's an opportunity for us. We call it the umbilical cord between the chamber organization and our business community. So it's more us letting them know what's going on out there in the business community that they can go ahead and take advantage of. We have an online events calendar that the businesses can go ahead and post their events on that they have going on. And that gets a lot of traffic by that. And on a, on a monthly basis, we report back to our investors about the traffic we're seeing on Twitter, Facebook, our website, um, and then just traffic through the chamber office as a whole. You have an IT person that helps you on all of this? You're it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're pretty technical in the office. We have um, three full-time staff pe pe persons, which include myself. We just migrated to the cloud, which kind of helps us out for IT support and backup more than anything else. So. Um, we want to make sure that we are running on other people's money. We're painfully aware of all that too. So we want to make sure that we're running a very good, clean operation that is, there's no waste. There absolutely is no waste in the chamber office, I can tell you that. We recycle everything. Paper, paper clips, everything. When you have meetings with the uh, area chambers, uh, it's, it's really a good uh, event to get vibes on what they are doing or may not be doing or I wish I could do this, I'm glad I'm not doing that. So what are you picking up as uh, some future ideas that you might uh, uh, see the chamber going in say two years or five years? Or I think as our, as our market is changing and I'm referring more to the business community market changing like that, there, there's certain segments of the business community where you need to reach out um, specifically the uh, industries that are here in our market. There's more manufacturing in our market. Um, everybody likes to talk about retail because that's, that's, really, that's, that's really provocative. Everybody wants to see what kind of restaurants are coming into town. But a lot of it has, um, 
a lot of the economic engine that's happening as an undercurrent is those industries that are here. They're doing some not big manufacturing. You're not going to see the big corporate campuses like Dell or Samsung anymore. But a lot of those those smaller manufacturing firms are now here in our market. So we'll be reaching out to those to those people. Uh, you mentioned the word mothering earlier, <laughs> and so um, in in any community, you'll see some businesses come in, mom and pops usually and um, they have their seed money, or maybe they don't, but anyways, they go through a struggle stage, and then they, the, the ways part, either they're successful or they have to make that tough decision. Uh, in, again, your two decades, I'm sure you've seen this happen. What, who can help in any way in those situations? We offer business development sessions. Those are basically one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions um, with me. Um, and I have seen businesses come and go. I've seen people lose their houses. I've seen people lose their 401ks. I've seen them lose their marriages because they just don't go in there with their eyes open. So we try to be very, very blunt about what it takes to be an entrepreneur um, and be a small business owner in this environment. Um, I can usually tell within the first five minutes of a conversation whether somebody's going to have the wherewithal to see it through and literally have shepherded hundreds of businesses as, as they have come through here. We are working with about a half a dozen businesses right now that want to come in here, and we don't sugarcoat it. We tell them, you know, 90% businesses fail within the first year. Most of the reason why they fail is that because they are underfunded, undercapitalized, they're disorganized, and the market just doesn't have any, have any desire to have you here. And I tell people it's got that passion to profit. Just because you have a passion for something doesn't mean that the market has a passion for you. So you need to get for that passion to profit and structure your business appropriately. 70% of business growth that's going to happen in this country is going to come from entrepreneurs. And we just find that in our market for up to 50 employees. And um, we've got some, you know, I think Community Impact is one of those really great local grown um, businesses that certainly has um, is budding the national average, especially when it comes to print media. They've got in their 16 different markets right now. I think they're about to go into 17 markets right now. John is a graduate of Flickerville High School, um, and definitely he found he was in the right place at the right time, and you know started with a small businesses, and now he's got a wonderful corporate campus right there off of 45 with a bunch of employees. So, um, and that's and what he it made takes. The Forbes list at once upon he did make the Forbes list. Yes, he is our local. You know, he's our local hero here when it comes to. Um, to the print media like that. And then there's the smaller business like um, Pecan Street Deli, which started as, you know, the um, deli and grill now, which started just down the street from the chamber office, just, you know, two doors down. Um, actually, they really started as Mama Jack's and then and, and started their deli. And now, you know, they've got their own building. Um, Pluggerville Orthodontics is another one of those, those success stories. Uh, Dr. Dentry, she's another one of those su success stories where they come in, they start off small, and they kind of baby step their ways where they're in a lease space, and then eventually they, they build their own their own building, their own practice. So we have several of those in the market. So, and those are my children. You know, those are the people that have you know have shepherded through through uh, you know good times and bad times. Well, it's amazing to talk to you, and uh, I assume that your training uh, is nearly uh, ongoing. Uh, and I don't know that you have to do continuing ed, but uh, uh, you have to you have to stay up, uh, well, and and you can get behind very quickly if. You can. <laughs> that was one of the conversations I was having with my staff as we were living. I said, we've, we've got to be faster than we are right now. Um, I am certified through the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. I, am, uh, I have IOM after my name, which stands for Institution of Organizational Management. And there's usually just one of me in, in a community, um, unless you're in Austin, which there's several specialty chambers. There's Capital City. There's the Asian Ch Chamber of Commerce. So my colleagues are outside of Pflugerville. And I do routinely get together with them, and we kind of exchange ideas and see what's happening out there. There's a statewide organization. And you just got to keep moving, especially when you're in Pflugerville, because this dynamic market we're in right now is changing every day. I know if I take a week off and I come back and go, there's a new sign, or there's a new business going up there. I'm surprised how much you know, it happens on, on a, you know, just in a seven-day period, too. And that's a wonderful support group for you, too, because I know in any career or occupation, to be able to talk the office talk with people from outside of your community is very valuable. And I'm the old lady on the block. I'm the longest serving uh, chamber exec in Central Texas right now, which is kind of weird to be in that 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 position. <laughs> now you have a, a, a state chamber organization also? Right. There's TCCE, which is a Chamber of Commerce Executives, um, and then there's the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The U.S. Chamber is a little bit more political than what we are. We, we, 
we're, we're bipartisan. We don't want to make anybody mad. We're not in the business of hacking people off. We're all about partnerships and alliances. But we lived in a period where Texas has uh, had leadership that really supported economic development, and uh, Pflugerville was able to be part of that game plan. Right, and the, the economic development sales tax was so important for the progression of the business community here. We were absolutely the last community in the region to come to the table with an ED tax. That's why it was so important for us to get it when we did. If we hadn't gotten it, I don't know where we would be right now. We couldn't be attracting the businesses and negotiating the deals we are right now. And that's taxpayer money, and so we always have to be very aware of that. Um, whatever deals are being made, that that's other people's money, and we make sure those deals are appropriate for taxpayer money. So you've been uh, the face of the Pflugerville community, and uh, you've been spotlighted and at a lot of uh, ribbon cuttings and our dedications uh, from small to grand. Uh, think back and share any of those that you would like to with us, uh, the feeling oh. within. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, there's a question for you. you you've done a lot of shoveling. <laughs> I have done a lot of shoveling. Um, I think the thing that if you're asking about what makes, kind of warms the cockles of my heart when it comes to all that, is to seeing a business that I have worked with. Because by the time you get to the groundbreaking or by the time you get to the ribbon cutting, a lot of work has, has happened. And so it's always so great when you actually see the dirt being turned or you see the, build, the, the ribbon being cut in front of the building. And that's what I find a lot of, of self-satisfaction with. Not only at that moment in time, but when the business is there five years from now, 10 years from now, you know, hopefully 20 years from now, um, that's really what I find really, really encouraging. And it's so great to be here from Fluger because we are literally riding the wave right now, mm -hmm. you know, with Wine Falls and the lake and all the great things that are happening. We're really riding the wave. So this is really a fun time for us in this community. And I know uh, I, I take the east-west corridors, the Fluggerville Parkway, the Wells Branch Parkway, and even more that uh, put the infrastructure in that was, uh, uh, you were at those events, and, and the SH-130 uh, ribbon cutting. Right. And, uh, very significant in our market, but not only those those big those big highways, but the city has done just a phenomenal job keeping up with the east west north south roads to get the community people within the community getting from one place to the next. We keep talking, we're hearing about awesome traffic, awesome traffic. Fugerville has some of that those traffic issues, but because the city has been able to devote those dollars because of the sales tax that's been coming in, that only fills up the the ED um, coffers, but it fills up the the city coffers. And the city has been lowering property taxes. And when we were talking about diversifying the economy, that you can't build the economic base on rooftops, um, having those sales tax dollars coming in has, has been able to create um, those wonderful um, roadways that we enjoy here in Pflugerville. So let's, uh, what, what do you see uh, with your strategic plan and the chamber and the community in the next, uh, again, five, ten, or, or more years? Um, I th we we got to keep our local economy diverse and strong. So we need to keep attracting businesses in here that the consuming public want to consume with. And then that's that catch-22. You got to keep on building the houses that will support those businesses coming in here. With Project Sunshine coming in, where the, the businesses are going to be in there too, we've got to make sure we've, we continue the growth and quality growth in our market for people to, to consume because you can't open businesses unless you have people that are willing to trade with them infrastructure we're moving okay in that direction I believe so um, I think there may be some some challenges with water but that's going to be a regional issue that's not just a, a local issue the lake goes a long way for helping us out from all that too um, we do have water but it's going to cost us you know that the water we get comes in from LCRA and um, we need to make sure that we keep the um, we keep that affordable so, what do you especially like about living in Pflugerville today? <laughs> Other than you can shop at home. I think it's the choices that we have, you know. There, you know, there's some great opportunities and the arts community is beginning to come on. And so, you know, you can take advantage of so, so many wonderful things within the city limits of Pflugerville and you don't have to deal with the traffic in some of the areas north and south of us. Uh, did the Chamber participate in Deutschenfest? What happens when? That event. Um, we don't really do too much with Deutschen Fest other than we deal with all the phone calls that come in and um, just get people pointed in the, in the right place. Our big event is the Family Festival and Expo. That's, that's, our, that's right. our big thing. Right. We, um, 
the Halloween, excuse me, the Christmas event that comes in, that used to be ours. Um, and so once again, we just go ahead and um, get the people pointing in the right direction. We kind of look at ourselves as being a clearinghouse for information. We don't have all the answers to the questions, but we do, you know, try to get people pointing in the right direction. We do get some really interesting phone calls, like there's a chicken in my yard, what do I do? You know, there's a flock of white birds out in Lake Pflugerville, what do I do? <laughs> so, you know, we do get some interesting phone calls like that. What do you see as a, a how would a visitor center either help the city or doesn't need it? We don't quite have that. The chamber really acts as that. We way. really do right now. You know, I think eventually um, the, the city is laying the ground for the CVB, the Convention Visitors Bureau. And as we have more th opportunities for um, people to come to our market and want to take advantage of that, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with the Northeast Metro Park and um, with the skate park coming in too that, you know, there will be, there'll be time for that to happen. And we'll start being able to capture that crowd that comes in for so many years, they came and they went. Well, and capturing is being able to have the sleep rooms for them to stay in. So with the hotel space in there, that's why when um, Northeast Metro Park was built, we did those signage that said, you know, when you come out, turn left, don't go right, and go get on 130, turn left to go into downtown Pflugerville and to be able to trade with those businesses. And the healthcare industry is really, you know, taking off these days, too. We we're seeing lots of um, emergency clinics and medical clinics opening up here, too. Unfortunately, when you have you know, athletic events out here, you may have injuries, and so you want people to, to turn left and not right to come into Pflugerville. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else that you can think of? No, it like truly has been a pleasure to have a conversation with well, you. Well, thank you for your service to our community, and thank you for making a great big difference uh, because uh, Pflugerville has come a long way, and it's uh, going to continue to go in all directions and, well, uh, with a focus, which is good. Truly my pleasure, but it, the Chamber is not just me. The Chamber is um, many, many people, many Board of Directors, um, businesses that, have been, that, that I you know, sit on their shoulders that have dedicated a lot of time and service to the community to make the Chamber what it is today. But it does give them a voice, but then you can come out as one voice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right.